Testing, testing. Hello. Okay, you know if you're going to get recorded, you have to speak, right? <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were talking to me. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. You should really dump your boyfriend <laughs> now that we've taken our bathroom break. Yeah. Two guys, one podcast. And I'm Honey Bun. Oh, I forgot what I'm supposed to say. Uh, You're welcome. Two guys, one podcast. Your future boyfriend and eventual husband. Break her heart later, but for now, I'll enjoy her. Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm Honey Bun. And this is how I became her handsome. And this is how I became his beautiful. Is where I'm sitting okay? Uh, yes, but you want to get... Uh, okay. Like in front of it? <laughs> well, so you can move the mic around in front of you so that you so you get comfortable. But oh, you see oh, how... Okay, yeah, look, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're making this very difficult. No, <laughs> I'm saying, look, two chairs. you can pick... No, I'm saying you can move the mic around. See oh, what I'm saying? Can, oh, this. Yeah. So you can get right. sideways and then pull it out and put it in front of you. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. It's kind of nice. <laughs> it's almost like. Oh, you fancy. It's almost like this is a professional <laughs> recording studio or something. I know. Okay. So okay. is this okay? Yeah. No, you're. Okay. You're a little meek, but you're fine. There well, you are. Yeah, I'm a little nervous. Nervous? No. Why? Why are you nervous? Just cause it's the first time i've ever spoken to a microphone except singing in church <laughs> i was little you were recording virgin <laughs> yes you were popping i'm deflowering you Aud- auditorily <laughs> yes oh you deflowered me auditorily Audit- what's that word auditorily i don't <laughs> yeah, think that's a, a real word ago. <laughs> um are you ready you i really was born th- ready <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be so happy <laughs> He's going to be so happy. <laughs> I'm one guy. And I'm Honey Bun. And this is how I became her handsome. And this is how I became his beautiful. Let's do this. Did you make notes? I did not. Because I, I didn't know we were doing it until like of- today. <gasps> you know what we could do? I thought first of all we'd just tell our story. We'd okay. just tell our story and see how long that took. Okay. But I th- if that didn't take very long. Let's say that's only 20 minutes or something. Then we can play some games if you want to. Okay. Uh, I figured we'd try to get at least an hour, well, I'm saying an hour no. and a half of audio. Yes. What, I, what I'm saying is I had that list on my phone. Yeah, that was one of the games that I wanted. I wanted you to go through the... And figure out who said what. Yeah. But I'm saying we could use that as a reference for notes if we needed. Oh, no, that's a, that's a very good idea. That's a very good I idea. have dates on there and stuff. Well, I'm sh- then I'm sure that will come up. Okay. Let's, um, let's, let's start at the beginning, though. I guess that's the place where you start with these sorts of things. Yeah. How how do you guys know each other is a question that generally gets asked right. uh, around here anyway. How'd you meet? How'd you meet is a question, I think, in the rest of the world for relationships. Around here, mm-hmm. the question generally is, how do you know each other? Because it's, it's not Everybody super, knows everybody. Yeah, everybody knows everybody. Much. Small town life. Yeah, it's very much small town life. But southern life in general, like you, you, you tend to gravitate in relationships towards people that like come from people that your people know or something. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you know each other is a difficult question for me because we it's we know each other in lots of different ways. We do. How did we meet it's though? An is an odd. easier way to start. How did we meet? We met because you liked my Facebook page. No. <laughs> We met because I heard you on the radio. That was that was and how it started I first. Facebook stalked you because you know. Like, so uh-huh. so you listen to you like the so you like the radio station and you listen yes. to the radio station. The new radio station we had in town. Am I the reason why you went and liked the Facebook page, or w- did you like no. the station enough in general? No, no, I heard you say, "I'm Joel," you know, with the name of the radio station, whatever, and I was like, Joel. That's that's gotta be that's gotta be this this guy, and so then you know we have Facebook. So I hopped on Facebook and typed in your name in the search, and I was like, hmm. And I was like, I wonder. And we had like twenty one friends in common, so I was like, that's totally who that guy is. So then I sent you a message, which I still have on my Facebook page. Oh, that's sweet. I the way the way that we know each other, the reason why the name was familiar to you right. is because I knew your husband. I knew your your first husband. Yes. 
First uh, we, husband. I. You know what? I have been, for real, I've been trying to figure out what what the hell to call him. Here's the, here's the it's problem. It's impossible to yes, call him anything because, until you get a second husband. <laughs> yes, because if you call him your husband. Like, people don't think he's. They yeah. think he's living. Well, yes. we should tell people that. Yes, well, that's what we're going to get to. Yes. You're, anyway. You're, you so I here's I grew up with your with your first husband late husband your late husband there you go that's what he is he's your late husband not late deceased. for this podcast he is deceased yes uh, I grew up with him we knew each other in junior high and high school and stuff we had a ton of friends in common both came from the same small town and I knew years later that he had gotten married and I think I probably even saw pictures on Facebook he and I were Facebook friends so I'm sure I would have I knew. When he passed away, through our friends, when he passed away, I knew mm-hmm. that then it happened, and I don't, I didn't reach out to you directly because oh, we yeah. had never met. No, I didn't. Know but I, know. I told friends, I was like, hey, if there's anything I can do for for her, let me know. So we didn't know each other, but we knew of each other. Right. Fast forward a few years, two years, I guess, at this point, when you or a year and a half a year or so, and a half, yeah. when when right, about, right out of year, you started half. stalking me on the Facebook. I did. Yeah, it had been um, right out of year because the station opened, like station launched on, in like January, right? Yeah. And so immediately, that in was December, the actually. So yes, the, I mean yes, it was January because his birthday was in January, and I contacted you about playing a song. That's right. And uh. That's right. That I'd forgotten about that. First, had any kind of interaction. Contact. Yeah. And we, well, we became Facebook friends, and and you know we liked each other's statuses and and photos and comments and stuff. Too and much we for did, assets liking. Yes, and <laughs> and we did, we did have a, a lot of friends in common, and so uh, it seemed natural that that we would be friends as well. I was single at the time mm-hmm. because, uh, as anybody who listens to the show knows. Um, I'm divorced. I've got I've got two young sons and uh, an ex-wife uh, who I share custody of the boys with, mm-hmm. and um, and I had just moved back to the town we went to college in. You and I went to college together. We just didn't know each other during that no. time. Tons of friends in common. Right. Just never bumped into each other. One of those weird things. So we're Facebook friends for a while. But we didn't get together, and the reason why we didn't get together is because somebody had a boyfriend, and it was not me. <laughs> it was me. Yeah. No, it. Mm, there. No, no. There was. There was not a reason that. I mean, I did have a boyfriend. That's. That's a fact. That's truth. But we never even interacted to a a place where. I mean, I did not have a boyfriend, so maybe that was like you. You were all like. Rant. Oh, she has a boyfriend but like we never even interacted enough to want to get together or at least in my opinion until um can i mention that artist's name on here yeah okay until bradley bridges night till Cinco de mile uh bradley because- bridges who's a friend of the podcast and has been featured here before uh, he was playing in town and you and i went out together that night but no i what i'm saying is you were an attractive girl who obviously had an interest in me that was clear from the first time you messaged me you liked way too many of my facebook statuses way too quickly it was obvious you were into me i'm really the mhr i'm just saying <laughs> uh you are a redhead and and it is true you are you are hot as established by me in episode one by the way yes you in do. episode one yes i um outrank a couple of mcdonald's chicks uh absolutely mm-hmm. absolutely Love you more than those bitches before. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's our that's our cute tagline. I, uh, Honey Bun has a <clears throat> a teensy bit of a jealousy streak, and, uh, it's true. and that is that is my blanket statement uh, to show her why it's it's unnecessary um, because I love you more than those bitches before which is definitely true but bitches. so the point anyway, was yes you if you had been single i would have been all about it you were a, a an mm-hmm. attractive wo- don't laugh mm-hmm. you were an attractive woman you were obviously into me i would have been down except for you had a dude and i'm not that guy right. i've never been a cheater i am not a cheater right until you made me a cheater no no it doesn't make you a cheater you were just getting yours i was being the cheater so but let's don't short circuit. What okay. here? Here's a sequence of events. Bradley's going to be playing in town. Yes. 
you had posted on Facebook something about it. Hey, I'm going to this thing. I'd be like, hey, I'm going to be there too. Right. We could finally meet. Excellent. Hey, look at that. There was just instantaneous chemistry when I walked in the bar, right? Like, and you felt it too. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, you were talking to another local artist and, uh. Oh yeah, yeah, and so I, um, I, I mean, I knew who he was. I know him. You came up and introduced yourself, and you turned around. Like when I started walking, you turned around and you were like, "Oh!" And you pointed at me, and you like immediately was like, "Come around, give me a hug." And then we forgot everybody else we were there with and sat. Uh, I was there with no one. Well, First off, I'd like to I say I came. I came to see you and and the artist, but you were there with a whole group of people, and you did not speak with them pretty much the rest of the night. Right. Um, so we we could go on and on about uh, the gushiness of the silly little conversations that we had that first night. But but, but the the uh, the crux of the thing was this. <laughs> I wanted to ask you home that night, and what kind of girl did I think you were that you would have even gone anyway? But. I didn't, and I wasn't going to because you did. You did have a guy, and you were dating a guy. And by the way, we could, we can't say he was a schmuck. He was not a good boyfriend. Yes. He's not a good boyfriend, and he wasn't even, as it turns out, that into you. And so, in the end, right. both you guys are better off. But mm-hmm. I was just like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I I wasn't going to let you go away though without me making it clear that I had interest. So <laughs> my bullshit move was. Here's here's my number. I'm no. gonna give you my number. No, that's yeah, not yeah, how I went. Yeah, yeah, well, it's kind of like that. But you were like, um, "Listen, so, honey bun, I know that this is weird, or maybe it's not so weird. I mean, because you got a boyfriend and all. But uh, would it be weird if I got your number? That way we could have dinner or something sometime." And I was like, "No, that's not weird at all." And you said, "Uh, you know what? I'm trying to be all slick." You were like, "How about I give you my number, and then you can do whatever you want with it." <laughs> Like, I didn't know what the hell you were doing. And I was like, that works, too. And then what happened? Uh, you texted me. I didn't even get out. I barely got mm-hmm. out of the bar. You texted me before I was out of, I before said, I was out of the parking lot, anyway. Yeah. And I said. Now you got my number. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and I did. And and from there, it was, a very, it was a very swift race to the end of your current relationship. It like, was. I mean. From that moment, it was clear we were both really into each other. And like I said, I was single, and I had been like I had been seeing people right. and and hanging out or like whatever. You do. But I, there was definitely something there with you, and and we've had the chemistry from from moment one. So I invite you over for the first time, and it took uh, a couple of weeks before finally I was like, you should really dump your boyfriend, or we should yeah. not do this. Like we, we hung out not. a handful of times. You spent your birthday with me, for mm-hmm. instance, even I though did. you were still dating him. Yeah, I spent yeah, I spent the first part of my day with my best friend, and the second part of the day with my f- other best friend. Turns out, your future boyfriend and eventual husband. Yes. Uh, in He's the yes. end, I think uh, our uh, our our happy ending justifies uh, the the early ugliness in the beginning of our relationship. That's it what wasn't I like really think. ugly. It was amazing. Mm. I just, you know. I won't hurt people's feelings, so you know. It's Me weird. neither, man. I'm a lover, not a fighter. No. Uh, but the good news is, you did break up with him, like right after your birthday, and two days. We didn't. We didn't date. We did not. It was not allowed. That was because I, I didn't. I couldn't. I was really at a place in my life where I didn't. I never imagined that I was going to let anybody else in. Mm-hmm. I had. I, I had loved somebody very deeply and, and begun to build a life and done all these things that you're told to do. And it had fallen apart around me through not no fault of my own, but it felt like beyond my control. And I was like, never going to let that shit happen again. No, 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 not for me. Been there. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Right. Like, and, 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 and yes, exactly. The same, yeah. not the, not the same, the same thing, thing, obviously, but. Yeah. But Thinking likewise, things out of your control right. spiraled and conspired to to tear apart your storybook ending. Right. And, and so here we are. Here we both were in kind of our the second act of our lives, so to speak, even though we're both really young. I, I was just determined that I was going to live alone. Like I was mm-hmm. going to be the guy. You know, I could have girlfriends if that was a thing from time to time. But they were not going to be heavy parts of my life, mostly because – I I wanted to focus on taking care of my kids and being a good dad when I had them, and when I didn't have them, I I didn't know a way to weave together the two parts of my life. I didn't know how to have fun and be an independent 
uh, adult again, you know, trying to reinvent myself or whatever after the end of the marriage and be a dad. I could do either one of those things and I could switch right. the flip on and off or flip the switch on and off. But I, I couldn't do that if I was going to have a partner. What were we talking about? Um, the disillusion of your marriage. <laughs> When you say it like that, it seems so casual. <laughs> um, I know the uh, yeah no the the, the you, you know date. my marriage had fallen apart and and I was like okay well that's okay so I'm not good at that and that's fine I can be good at a lot of other things I'm just not going to be good at that right. and I'll be a really good dad and I can be a good friend and I can be a good lover and I can be a good buddy I'm not going to be a good husband right. or a boyfriend or whatever and so so yeah I was just like hey you can be and I was really upfront with you about it, right? Like I, I never lied to you about it or like led no, you on or like, anything. I was like, okay. I was like, this is the space I have in my life. Does Challenge that fit accepted. you? <laughs> Were you real? Is that the case? Were you like from moment one? You're like, yeah, but not really. I don't know that it was from moment one, but it was rather quickly. I can tell you, it's definitely before August. <laughs> Oof. Um, in the story of all great loves. There, there comes a tough time of tribulation. Where, there, a, uh, where the male counterpart is an idiot. Uh, <laughs> in the words of the great Ross Geller, we were on a break. <laughs> Whatever. Here's here's what happened. When uh-huh. You and I started hanging out. Okay. Seriously, you had broken up with your boyfriend. Uh-huh. And after that, we were together about a month? A um, month and a half? It was a month. The, Almost a full that month. That was the end of July, beginning of August. There you go. Okay, so the beginning of August, and it really wasn't the beginning of August. It was really the middle of July. I started getting antsy. You? No, he started getting asked out by a computer girl. That's That didn't happen. That didn't happen. I I got asked out. I got asked out the day before we actually went out for the first time. But there, it's not like there had been a long series of... Uh, like flirtation, and then all of a sudden, I finally I succumbed or whatever. It r- didn't have anything to do with anybody else. It was about you and me, and and where I felt I wasn't comfortable with how much I liked you and how much I liked having you around. And so, I grovered you near far, and I I did I did. did I we were hanging out a lot, and then we hung out a little less for about a week and a half or two weeks. And then I was like, I really think maybe we should stop hanging out like this. That what is was, not what you said. What did I say? This is why I had to like literally leave the get out of north town. northern of the state and go to the southern of the state for a week. Because you said that you met someone and that it was going to escalate to the next level. You were pretty sure if it hadn't already and you just lied to me then. And then you said you did, didn't you? Did I lie? No, I didn't lie. And um, and you said. I told you before anything happened. And I don't want to be. Uh, I don't want to wake up one morning, and be sleeping with you and be sleeping with her. That's basically what you said. Yeah. So, and I was like, okay. He said, because then I, because you said, because then I'll feel bad. So we can't hook up anymore. You're an asshole. I tried to chase you away like Lassie. I tried to chase you away like Lassie. More like old Yeller. <laughs> Shoot me. No, it was it was not that it was not that bad. It was pretty mean. Well, I'm thorough. What can I say? Um it didn't take though. It didn't take. What a week, a week and a half? When Two I was, weeks? I was in South Louisiana when I got the text message. What text message? text message that you asked me to come back you're like hey so how long did you stay down you weren't down there the whole time i was down there for five or six days that's how long that's how long from the time from the time that i told no, you no no oh. it was after that we i don't even think we saw each other after that i was so i just didn't i was sad no i know we didn't see each other after that and then uh, that happened like a big one week and then the next week i went down to down south all right so maybe a total of like 12 or 15 days then i guess yeah, it was two or three weeks no nah, i'm saying it wasn't three weeks i know for okay, a fact it was it wasn't two three weeks. weeks yeah it, it might have been two weeks okay, at the outside yeah, it's two weeks you <clears> sent me a text message and i was standing in my friend's carport back 
back porch, whatever. And it said, hey, so how you doing? And I was like, I'm good. <laughs> and uh, he said, so are you? I was like, I'm in this city. He said, yeah, well, when are you coming back? And I was like, shouldn't you be talking to this other person who I didn't know her name and at the time? And uh, you were like, yeah, that, that's not going to work out. And I remember looking at my phone and being like, so you're right. <laughs> like, I was so pissed. You said, so can I see you when you get back? I said, ah, yeah, I don't know, let's see. And I was back for like two or three days before I came and saw you. And you knew I was back because you owned the Facebook. I don't have any justification. It was a dumb. It was a dumb move. Well, we which weren't is why really technically dating, but no, we weren't. We weren't. We weren't technically dating. We weren't hypothetically. Dating. Hypothetically dating. We weren't hyperbole dating. We were. We were together. And then I said, "Hey, we're not going to be together." Mm. It was a poor choice. It was a poor choice. But, Which is why I rectified it. Yes, you did. And I was nice enough to let you come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the reason and why. Why? Why did you – I guess that's the I guess that's the biggest question that I have truthfully is why with all of the – and it's not like it was just that incident. Like in general, I had an air of, hey, this is never ever going to be the thing that you want it to be. And I like you a lot, and that's true. I was all—I always liked you a lot. I cared about you very, very deeply, even pretty early on. But I was very o- open with this is never ever going to have a happy ever ending. After you know why? You repeatedly why? told me that. So why I did I choose to? Yeah. Um. Well, I really liked you. I mean, I didn't, and it wasn't necessarily like like in that in that first instant. But I really, I really did like you. I like. I mean, people say this all the time. I liked you as a person. But I you enjoyed sure. being around. But I did. I enjoyed enjoyed being around you. You're funny, and we seemed to get each other's jokes. And some stuff you talked about was a little over my head. But like I followed, and you exp- you were actually patient and explained things I didn't understand. And so I was like, hmm. He and we had some similar friends. I was like, well, I don't. I mean, I don't know if I can continue being a, his friend or if if this is all it's going to be. I don't. I don't really know. Or if we just stop this hooking up thing and we're just friends and I have to see him with other people, that's probably going to be weird. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to handle this. This is new. This is new, completely new territory for me. But I'd know. I, I really did like you as a person. I thought you were funny. You made me laugh. And that was something I really needed at that point. When do you not need that? But Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Here's, here's what I thought about you. I, I have never met someone who was the following things all together at once. Uh, beautiful, genuine, and genuinely enthused and entertained. <laughs> like you you have a very positive, you are a smiley, happy, laughy person. Yeah. You want to be entertained and happy and enjoying yourself most. That is your default mode. Right. And that's infectious. And for a guy who likes to make people laugh and, and who who – uses that as a big portion of his own like self-worth or whatever Mm -hmm. it's important to have that around to be surrounded by that i right i i had never had that combined with a really like genuine and earnest nature in a beautiful woman like i have i've got buddies who are genuinely earnest and who are also really happy people and smiley and laughy and who get my jokes and who who want to be entertained and laugh along with me and be my audience or whatever yeah um Never had that in a woman before, and it was intoxicating. So that's the first thing that that pulled me to you is that you got my sense of humor and you made me laugh and whatever. The the reason why. (laughs) You know what? You know what's another thing, and this sounds very, I don't know if cliche is the right word or, but I never had to feel. I mean, I never felt like I was proving anything or like having to. To be something that I wasn't or like make you think that I knew about this or did that or just, I don't know. You didn't have it was to just pretend? Nice. Yeah, or like try, I mean, really, I don't know. It well, just seemed very natural to hang out with you. Like I felt like I was very much myself more than with with other people, not just relationships, but people in general. And that was very, I guess, I guess it, refreshing 
that's the case for me too. I'm more myself with you and more honest with you than I have been with anybody else as far as a, a romantic relationship goes. But I think that has more. I, I, not that I'm taking credit away from you, but I don't. I mean, we can stay together, and I can be honest with you because well, yeah. you are the person that you are. But the uh, the reason why I'm more honest with you, I think, has more to do with me and where I am in my life. And I. I bet that's probably the case for you, I'm too. I'm sure. You at a different time wouldn't have been that open and honest, even with me. Right. The reason, though, why I realized Computer Chick, and it wasn't about Computer Chick, and I've tried to make that case with you. It was never, ever about Computer Chick or any other chick. It was about not tying myself to you and not getting dependent upon another person. Right. Not falling for someone who I saw no future with, not mm-hmm. because of you. Because of you. Yes. Yeah. I didn't see a future with anybody. Mm-hmm. Computer Chick was nearby, interested, and not someone that I could ever see myself getting that kind of attachment to. And that's why like she happened to be the one that filled that week and a half. It was she was she was just convenient, and she could have been any one of a of a bunch of different people. Right. She and if it hadn't been her, there and I'm not saying there were a bunch of people lined up, but I'm saying that was it was just anybody. The reason why there's a second half of the story, the reason why I I, I ever came back was what being away from you made clear was there was the connection that you and I had. That did show promise of somebody that I could be around for a long yeah. period of time and build a relationship with. And then there was the way that I interacted with the rest of humanity pretty much, which isn't that well. <laughs> I like every, I like people. I love people. I love people a whole lot. Right. I tend to hate persons individually once mm-hmm. we interact with one another. Like the, the, the individual human beings that I interface with well for long periods of time – very very small in number. It is very small. I'm number. a weird guy. It's why I work in a box. In a, I work in a dark box with a microphone, and I can I can share my voice with the other people, and I don't have to see any of them or interact with any of them. Right. I'm, I'm just weird you dude. and your electronics. Yeah, just me and my machines. Thank you very much. My my ones and zeros. <laughs> um, but I liked you. I mean, and I and I, I I love you now, obviously. But I liked you. I liked you from moment one. And that was not the case for anybody else. Even people who I was romantically or uh, or sexually attracted to, physically attracted to, even people who are interesting to me and nice to me. Right. I get real fed up with them real quick. And all of a sudden, all of their personality traits that rub me the wrong way, like that's all I can focus on. And then I don't like them anymore all of a sudden. It was the realization that this was going to be like, is this what I wanted my life to be? A series of like month long relationships yeah. where I faded into and then faded out of hanging out with a person because I got to the place where I couldn't stand to be around them anymore. No, that was not what I wanted to do. Mm-mm. And and more than that, just because I was sure that I was going to break your heart somewhere down the line, mm-hmm. did I want to deny myself of being around you and having so much fun and enjoying your presence and, and I'll break her heart later, but for now I'll enjoy her. <laughs> And other guy is the one that finally told me. He was like, it's not your call to make. Right. I do remember him Like, if she wants to get her hands dirty and mess her life up again, when you end up being the lazy shithead that you tell her you are. Yeah. That's on her. That's on her. She's a grown-ass woman. Mm Mm-hmm. And and you need to stop worrying about uh, keeping her heart from breaking, because that's not your job. Exactly. Now, don't break it on purpose, obviously, yes, but like... If if it turns out that you can't be the knight in shining, shining armor that she decides suddenly that she needs instead of what she's happy with right now, that's not on you either, you know. Like yeah. so, anyway, he's the one that finally that finally convinced me that it was okay. And ask him; he'll take credit for this relationship. Yes, 100%. he does. Uh, You're welcome. Other guy knew you as well before. Yes, he knew your husband. He did. My husband worked in a uh, video store. And other guy, Mrs. Other Guy, frequented that movie store. And I was in there a lot, obviously. He worked there. So I saw them a lot. And I knew Mrs. Other Guy through her brother who knew Right, and yeah, you guys got a so ton of friends circle, in common. You know, kind of thing like that. 
And it's a so small I was town familiar and we all with them. Yes. I wasn't on a like, hey, hanging out at your house with you all the time person. I mean, I'd never been to their house except with you, but I knew of those I knew of those people. Taking off clothes in here. Uh, it's, it got hot. <laughs> it is a little Too hot in the hot tub. <laughs> Too hot in the hot tub. <laughs> We do not need a hot tub at the house, by the way. That's one of the that's one of the things we don't need. Um, we got a clawfoot tub, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> we make it hot. Ooh. <laughs> um. So, so that was August, and that was our last blip. I say our last blip. It wasn't our last fight by any stretch of the imagination. But that we but then we started hanging out. Oh, and that really, that wasn't even a fight. That was just like, um, okay, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back yeah um but once that was over and once we started hanging out again it it really kind of gathered steam pretty quickly that was in august and finally in january i introduced you to my sons yeah did i were we boyfriend and girlfriend first and then i introduced you to the kids or the other way around see see what happened was what happened was um were we did i ask you to go study (laughs) No, actually, um... I like the fact that you have to remind me of how everything went, by the way. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) What's beautiful about this is in 40 years, you might have slowly and carefully completely (laughs) changed our origin story to your own will. Like, you'll you'll be like, and then you promised me... You've been sedated this entire time. And then you promised me you would always do the laundry. (laughs) (laughs) Your ex-wife... Uh, we had a mutual friend whose children were having a birthday party, and she actually brought your two little boys to that birthday party in January, and you and I were already hanging out, and so I was v- very weirded out. I was kind of like, no, you know what, scratch that. I'm completely wrong. That was that was the you February. You came to son number one's birthday. Came to son number one's birthday. Yeah, because that birthday party that I was talking about before was the year before. It was before you and I even met I just we just become friends on Facebook. Yes, and that that birthday party was the next month. Yes, you invited me to Sun Number One's birthday party because I have a nephew, and who is one month younger than Sun Number One, and I'm just gonna call him Monkey, because that's do I have to call him Sun Number One? No, you can call him Monkey. Okay, that's what I call him. Yeah, that's fine. So, okay, um, but yeah, you said. Hey, bring nephew to Monkey's birthday party. Uh, it'll be fun. And I was kind of surprised by it because I was not allowed to meet the children. And so I was like, okay. Well, then I kept thinking. I I was already in very much like with you. And you were, I was, you were deep in like with yes, me. Yes. And your mom had already coerced herself in there to meet me that before Christmas. Oh, I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. And so... I knew she was going to be there. I knew I was going to see her. It was the only second time I was going to see her since that time. And so I was like, oh, I'm popping up twice. That's got to be a good sign. And it's got to be something. And, um, yes, I brought, yeah, I went to Sunday morning's birthday party with the nephew. And we brought him a gift. And then a couple weeks later, your sister had an engagement party. And you said, hey, listen, I'd really like you to go with me to this. I think we had just started dating. Like, just, like you just asked me. And you said, "Uh, and... The boys are going to be there, so there's that. I was like, okay, and it that went off without a hit, without a hitch. We really did it. It went really well. It did. It w- went really well. I yeah. Unbeknownst to you, the the son number one's birthday was your tryout. I figured that that yeah. was a, a fairly low pressure situation because it's mostly about the kids. There are going to be a lot of adults and a lot of people mm-hmm. that you knew there, so you weren't going to be like cornered with one of my parents. You were going to have an opportunity to meet the parents though they were going right. to i mean and they knew who you were already but they were going to have a chance to to talk to you and bother you a little bit i also knew that you would meet the ex-wife at some point there i mean right. and i knew you guys knew each other but that would be an official like hey here's this person and she knew that we had been hanging out and, right. and spending yeah, time together did. or whatever so like that was kind of everybody's introductory situation my deal with the kids was always this and i get it i totally respect it i i thought it was great well and it's because I I felt this way because I'd made the mistake of introducing them to somebody that was not around, 
and that wasn't a good influence or whatever. And it was and it was weird. And in retrospect, I'm like, ah, oh, it sucks. It didn't last very long, and the kids were very young, and so it doesn't matter. And I don't think they even remember. But I knew that that was not a mistake I was going to make again. Yeah. You know. And so I had been really vigilant about they just they did the kids didn't meet anybody except people I knew were going to be in their life right. long term people that were going to be. Around. And that was my admission to you, really. Like, the invitation to, to Monkey's Party was like, hey, I mean, barring the kids hating the way that you smelled or something, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, unless they were allergic to you. Just delightful. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it is. Uh, unless unless they were allergic to you, like, this is going to be a thing that I want to last. So, all right, hey, come meet my people. You yeah, know? and I did. And as it turned out, they like you maybe better than they like me. So, uh, very quickly, once the kids were involved, like, I realized – Okay, it's silly not to amp this thing up a little bit. And as soon as as soon as it had gone well, like you met people and it wasn't awkward and you met the kids and it wasn't awkward, that's when I was like, eh, I should really call her my girlfriend. That's what she is and it's almost like it's just me trying to be right by not letting that be the case. Mm-hmm. And really, the short version of the rest of our relationship is that it's me f- realizing just being correct on my approximations about my future is not enough reason to to not do something. Do you um no, I agree with you. Do you remember, I mean, when you asked me to be your girlfriend, do you remember where we were? I think I think you probably do because uh, we've talked about it a couple yeah, times. Yeah, I was in that we were in the cam- we were in my car. We were in I had, drove a Toyota Camry. Right. Which was my ex-wife's <laughs> that her father bought her before we were even married. Uh, and it got handed down to me. Um, yes, we were in the we were in the Camry, and we were on the side parking lot. Yeah, pulling up to my apartment, right? We were leaving. We we're going to Walmart. Leaving. <laughs> I asked you on our way to Romantic. Walmart. Romantic. You be poor, I mean, before you even put the car in drive, you said, um, "So I've been thinking," and I was like, "Oh shit!" It's like here we go again. Did you live? Damn. Did you live in constant fear of like? Yep. Game I mean, I constant now, fear, like, but like, mm, he's going to find some chick that's super hot and skinny. <laughs> I then, don't how many times did I tell you that I like big butts I don't know I, I do got a big old booty you you got a big old booty but it's perfect for me right. I don't and I mean honest to God like from day one that's another thing that I've been real upfront about right right and if the you love. will look at my I'm in love with your booty I'm in love with your booty if I if you look at past girlfriends both of them have had a large posterior the uh-huh. ex-wife didn't have big butt but she no. was odd in many reasons <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so I so I was all romantical on the way to Walmart. You were. You're like, uh, so I've been thinking. And I said, yeah. And it wasn't even, you didn't even act. I mean, this is what you said. You're like, uh, so you're my girlfriend. Like, you're mine. Like, you were telling me that I was your girlfriend. And I was like, oh, that, you're like, I don't know. Do people, do people ask, do people ask, like, should I, do you want to be my girlfriend? And I was like, yes. You're like, this is stupid. This is stupid. I'm just trying to be right. And this is dumb. So can we date you? Can you be my girlfriend? I said, yes, yeah, yes. I was trying not to get all excited. And then you said, okay, well, come here and give me a kiss. I gave you a kiss. And then we went and bought honey buns and milk and juice probably at Walmart. Probably. That's mostly what I purchased yes. when I lived alone at that frozen pizzas uh, <laughs> for my uh, sons, which Chicken is any, nuggets. as any good single dad can tell you, is the staple of, of a growing boy's <laughs> diet, frozen pizzas. Yes. I, I did. I had my head up my ass. But I got it out and I figured out, you know, hey, okay, we can be together. But still, and, even then. And it was <sighs> – it was a weird place for both of us because I was a widow. Am I still a widow? I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, what box have you been checking lately I, on the when they ask you, I are mean, you married, single? I say, I mean, if it says widowed, if it says the widowed option, I check widowed because technically I am till we get married. But generally check divorced, I guess. Well, yeah. I mean, because I guess if it's a legal, like super legal document, like if it was just a regular thing, it would say single. 
I think if it's a super legal document, it's probably not just a checkbox. <laughs> it's probably not. But anyway, uh, as opposed we to the regular <laughs> legal documents, the super legal the stru- documents, the super legal ones. The ba-da-da, 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 ba-da-da. <laughs> it's um, super legal. <laughs> but we were standing in your dining room, kitchen, living room. <laughs> Trifecta <laughs> in your house. <laughs> we were uh, we were standing in your cardboard box <laughs> in the front of it uh, near the door in the den area. Yes, near the flap, close yes. to the oven. And uh, <laughs> boy, ovens and cardboard boxes dangerous, dangerous people. Yes, watch out. And you said, "Hey, listen." And this is like right at, right before right before we started dating. You said, "Listen, if we really try to do this thing, like if we're gonna really try to do this." relationship thing like we've been talking about it if we're gonna try to do this i'm probably gonna screw it up i don't and you were like i don't know what i'm doing i don't i don't know and i said well i get that you know what do we call him late husband yeah yeah okay late husband and i were together for basically right at seven years six years something like that i don't know what i'm doing either this is this is new for me too (laughs) i said joel i've never dated anybody that's been divorced or has kids. I don't know what I'm doing. And you were like, well, I've never dated a widow. And you were like, we were both like, high five. <laughs> we'll figure this shit out together. <laughs> it's very true. It is a it is a modern American love story. Uh, even even then, though, okay, so now we've, we've, we've gotten to this place where I finally pulled my head out of my rectum. And I'm like, okay, will you be my girlfriend? Which feels ridiculous for a 30-year-old man to ask. Well, yeah. So I ask you to be my girlfriend, but still, I'm very, I'm like, no, we're never getting married, just so you're clear. That's never, ever going to get, going to happen. And yet you still went along with it. Because by this point, you're not deep in like with me anymore. Had we already established that you love me? Or did that come after dating? That came after. That came after dating? Really? I got the dates in my phone. We'll pull them out, lady. (laughs) <laughs> I guess that's the next big milestone is our is our our road trip, in which one guy discovers that that Honeybun is in love with him. Uh, did you figure it out on the road trip? Well, you and my aunt had the little discussion that I stepped in on. Oh, and you asked me. And it later. was that night or the next day yes, it was when we got in back. House. Yes, yeah. and you cornered me about it, and I was like, "Don't ask questions. You don't answer straight." Okay. That's a true fucking statement right there about relationships. Don't ask questions. That you know for a fact you don't want the answers to. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hear that you were in love with me. Because it's going to make me all... Weird. Yeah. Er. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And yet, I was pretty sure that that was the case. And then I I had to... Like, I had to verify. But here's the deal. That have that whole conversation happened. And then you didn't ask me about it for another month. Almost. Because that happened in the end of March when we went on our trip, our road trip. The whole, are you in love with me? Conversation was like April 12th. Yeah, that's because I was trying to let you get over it for a long time. Right. I was like, I surely she'll you. pull her head out of her ass mm-hmm. and realize that this is a bad this is a bad decision for her to make. What are your friends telling you this whole time? Because obviously you're talking to people about it. You've got good girlfriends. I do. Of course, a couple of them are also my friends. <laughs> True story. He's great. He'll get his head off his oh, ass God. eventually. Don't worry no, about it. Are. Yeah. One of them was like, he likes you. Like, he likes you. He just doesn't know it yet. And I was like, oh, God, thanks for being the girl that tells everybody that. And I was like, well, I kind of like him, too. And then I was like, well, I really like him. But they, they all said, well, he, you know, you know where he's at. He knows where you're at. Um, does does he know that you want more, maybe you know, or that you feel a little bit stronger for him? I was like, ah, I think you, I think he knows it, but whatever. And then Mrs. Other Guy was was very positive on the front. I mean, and it, people could say it's because she and I do genuinely like each other. We hang out all the time, but I think she really meant it. I think she did see something. I was like, look, this I could blow smoke up your ass, but he really does like you. He enjoys you. And he's gonna come around. He's he is, so don't don't give up on him. And I didn't have any intention of giving up on him. I was just worried that you were just gonna get tired of me. 
and you know hmm, okay well that was really fun for a little while but then I'd really I'd, I would have really missed be being your friend you know because at that point I, I couldn't really I couldn't just be a friend what your aunt said in the car that day while you were paying for your gas was she was reading a book I think it was a Stephen King book Anyway, and there was a quote in it, and she said, oh, listen to this quote, and the quote was, where there is love, smallpox scars are as pretty as dimples. Huh. And I was like, I said, oh, that's really pretty. She smiled, and she said, smallpox, that's all I'm saying. And you were getting back in the car, and I said, what? She said, nothing. And she grinned like she does, and she just and then we both giggled. And then you got back in the car. You said, what are y'all laughing about? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, which is the international women's symbol for something very important, which you're going to have to drag out of me over the next mm-hmm. long while. Enjoy that. So so that's the next big milestone is you and I have the conversation. I put it off for a month because I was convinced that you would come to your senses. Mm-hmm. I, how did I react to it in the short term? Like I didn't. Between, I know I didn't break between you. March I, I know and April. I didn't break up with you. I didn't. No, no. I mean, like when we had the when I asked oh, when you, you, had and you the, were like, yes. Uh, we both cried. That's fair. That's accurate. Uh, no, I'm saying that's a <laughs> that's a fair response, though. Oh yeah, we both cried. Yeah. I cried because I was caught. <laughs> you cried because you you genuinely felt bad that you did not feel. Or you thought that you did not feel the same way. Here's where I was. I knew that I did not feel about you the way that I had about Mm -hmm. my wife when I first met her. Or when we when we fell in love and when we got married. And in my ridiculous, immature brain. I guess I thought that meant that I didn't love you then. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what I was classifying. And as I said, oh, well, I don't love her. Or even, well, I love her like I love human beings. I love her as my friend. I love her as this person in my life. I'm not in love with her. What I realized, though, is I don't feel the way about you like I did about her at that time because I'm not the same guy, first off. You're right. not the same girl, second of all. And, and more importantly, and this is – what I came to realize, I was thinking, okay, since it's not the same, that other must have been better. Never taking into account the fact that that was a marriage that ended. That was a relationship that mm-hmm. was not m- built to last, that didn't go well. We didn't work that well together. So perhaps the fact that it wasn't the same was a good sign. And that's what I now realize in retrospect. I, I didn't realize it. Not at that the time. your love for her wasn't real because it was. No, it was, it was absolutely. just a different. But it was it was a different. It was a much m- right. more immature love. It was a, it was a much more immature love, and and the word that I have used a bunch is sober. Mm-hmm. My love for you is sober, and it felt funny to me. Truthfully, it was new, <laughs> and I didn't I didn't know what it was at first, and it took me a long time to come to grips with it. It also took me a long time to believe that I that I could expose myself in that way again and possibly be all right on the other side. Yeah. That was like I th- I was worried about losing self who who I'd finally come to be happy with. Like I I really do feel like I finally found myself at 30 years old. <laughs> like and I I finally got my life on track or whatever. You were you were fi- you I mean you were really figuring out stuff. You you were kind of figuring out who you were as a and who I wanted to be, right? Like, who, like as what a do man, I want to be when person, I grow up? As, as a, a father, dad, yes, exactly. Like all those things, and and all of those cylinders clicking into place. I was like, I can't fuck that up by by dissolving myself away again into a couple. That's the well, way I thought it worked. One of the things you said, I mean, you said this. Um, you you said, I don't know that I have enough room. In my heart, to love you and my boys. I was genuinely concerned about Yes, it. and I know you were. Because, I, I mean, I know what is due to your wife, to your life partner, to your spouse, to your love. And the fact of the matter is, I, I, I 
sometimes I do feel like I got a heart that's three sizes too small or <laughs> something, and it's bursting with with my kids. Yeah, and I didn't know if I had enough room in there, but turns right, out I you, did. I mean, and you said you, you were very in. upfront, and you said that. Turns out there was a perfect honey bun sized hole there. Isn't that what I asked for? It wasn't one moment that that changed my mind. I didn't have like an epiphany, right? Where I realized that this was all all right. It was a it was a slow understanding, a gradual understanding. <laughs> <laughs> When did I um when did I first break the news to you that things might be different? The I love you news? Yes. Can we tell this story? Yeah. Okay. It was right before my birthday. Yes. June twenty third. <laughs> we were being intimate. We were making love. We, we were so were. It was delightful. Always. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I am. <laughs> um, this is this is what I have written down. Jay asks if I love him. Because you did. You asked me in the middle, which I totally thought was ridiculous and unfair because you totally could have gotten punched in the throat. Because it would have been the perfect, like, because you like, do you love me? And I thought for a split second, I was like, I'm going to kill him if he's asking me in the middle of sex if I love him after he knows that I love him and he doesn't love me the same way. Like, all this stuff happened, but it was so quick. So I was like, of course. Like, you know that. And then you looked back at me and you said, I love you. And I said, wait, what? Really? Really? Yeah, you stopped. stopped. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you stopped. And you were like, wait, really? (laughs) <laughs> uh, because I and and I realized in retrospect, and you and I've joked about it many times since then. That is precisely like the asshole guy thing to do. It like is. you tell the woman in the act, "I love you," because that whatever. Yeah, sure, baby. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. you too. I love you. I love this thing that we're yeah, doing. That was awesome. Yeah, no, it wasn't like right. that at all. I what no, I didn't wasn't. I didn't go into it expecting to break it to you like that. No. Here's what And happened. then you got all wait, and this is the funny part. You were like, God, that, that is not how I planned it to go. Like I had a different idea on how this was gonna happen. Like, but I just said it. I and just then, really felt it at yeah. the moment. And I wanted and I ask you first with that last little bit of like I know like, she like are you gonna yeah, are you gonna yeah. stop it? Like you gotta you gotta be vulnerable first. Yeah. I'll I'll show you I'll show you mine if you show me yours. <laughs> You know, like it's kind of that attitude. Yeah. Um, it's funny, and in the long, it's uh, funny, it's cute. In I like the long it. line of milestones in our relationship, none of them are uh, traditional romantic uh, things. I ask you to be my girlfriend uh, in my car right. on the way to Walmart. Uh, I say I love you for the first time in the middle of sex. You proposed to me right after sex. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did That's at so midnight good. on Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, right at midnight on Valentine's Oh, shit, we're skipping ahead, though. We're okay, skipping ahead. ahead. What I was going to say, though, was what I was thinking about, though, was not the first time I said I love you. It was the first time that I suggested that there might potentially be a, a wedding at some point. Do you remember that? Yes, that was, in, that was this past December. Yeah. Okay, okay. So we're jumping from May to December. Okay, okay. You say, you say oh, you just want to skip ahead to December? But, I mean, and... And many good times were had. That's yes. what we could say about yes. the summer, pretty much. Like, and many good great. times were awesome. had. Like, we yeah. spent a lot of time together. You more and more got to do stuff with the boys, like, and were involved with things. And, like, you, like, and again, that was a gradual process. We right. built up to it. But, like, December. Every time, every time we added a new thing to how you and I interacted, I was like, okay, well, what about if you kept the boys? By yourself for me sometime. And right. that went great. Okay, what if we went to the park together and that went great? What if we did this together and that went great? What if well anyway, yeah, every 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 new barrier we jumped over went really well and went really easy. Like that was the other thing. And you and I've talked about it a lot. It just it wasn't a whole lot of work. No. It really wasn't. December <laughs> Hobbit had just come out. And we'd we'd wanted to go see it, wanted to go see it. We're about to go to the movies. And I didn't really care that we were going to go see it. But, I, you know, it was date day, whatever. 
I was kind of excited. I don't know. I felt like I would understand it. <laughs> you're not a Lord of the Rings fan. You watch the no. old ones and you just you feel like you've watched them several times and you you're like. I have no oh, idea no, what these fucking on. stories are about. Half they walk because, a lot. Yeah. Why do they speak that other language? <laughs> <laughs> it's just because I, um, I just haven't paid attention to them. If I said that I actually paid attention, I probably would like them, but I just haven't. My mind wanders. It's just not your bag, baby. Nothing wrong with that. True story. So, we were, f- we were about to go to the movies, and we were talking about Christmas decorations. And I said something about... You having a stocking. I had given you an Easter basket for Easter. And so, I mean, if I gave you an Easter basket, I sure should got to get you a stocking. But when I was going through my stockings, what I wanted to find for you was a cornflower blue, your favorite color, stocking. Or something similar. Couldn't find one. I found a dark blue one, but I didn't like it. So, I was joking around and I was telling you, hey, if you stick around for next Christmas... I will have you a monogram stocking. Like, I will get you one with your name on it or whatever. And you were laughing. I, I said, well, you know, and because I said, if you stick around, if you hang around. And you said, hey, hey. I was sitting on the sofa and you were sitting on the side of the coffee table on the floor. And I said, and you said. I wasn't, I wasn't sitting over there. I got up and walked to the other side of the coffee oh, table. Oh, that's right. You remember you sure that? Did. I was sitting beside you on the couch and I got up and walked around the, the coffee yes, table and knelt and on the down. other side. Yeah. And you said... To talk to you. I wanted we, to look at you. <laughs> you said, uh, we need to stop talking hypotheticals. And I, I thought was that like, was a strong opening line. Come on. I didn't, I didn't... Explain more, please. You said... Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember precisely what I said. I, wh- I think what I said was something along the lines of this. I don't know precisely how you fit in my life at the end Mm -hmm. and you know and whatever we become i don't know what it looks like all yet but i i do know that you're in it if there's anything that i can do about it i you know i i know that i i can't imagine not having you in it anymore so i'm gonna be around next year and i'm gonna be around the year after that and the year after that and like that's what we need to start planning for now i can't wait so today I get to ask you to marry me. Did I really? I said that? Yes, that's exactly what you said. That's that's well worded. And I was rendered speechless. Yeah, you were dumbfounded. I, w- I really was. <laughs> you said, you don't seem surprised by this. Have you had a conversation with this person, this person? And I said, no, no. And you were like, okay, well, you just don't be- seem surprised. I was like, no, I, I'm very surprised. And it took us leaving the house, getting in the car, going to the movie theater, sitting in the movie theater. I looked over at you and I said, hey, listen, the reason I don't seem surprised by this is because I am very surprised. I am shocked. Like, really shocked. <laughs> it's like you told and I me. am trying to wrap my head around it. That was on a Sunday. And then it took me all the way to Wednesday to call Mrs. Other Guy. Because then I had actually put this shit together in my head. And I thought, I got, hmm. Like back this is all. <laughs> yeah. Got yeah. warned about an impending proposal. Well, not even that. But it was just like he's uh, he's decided that I'm a person that he wants to spend forever with. And this is a complete turn of events because two weeks prior or whatever, you're saying, hell no, whatever, not going to happen. And and we had had, I mean, so it really was. It was a huge shock. That was December. That was December. Of this past year. Yes, of 2012. Uh, My baby sister got married on New Year's Eve, and you and I went to the wedding. Mm -hmm. And that was delightful. It was. It was great. And... At that wedding. <laughs> you told several people. I told a couple of people. In front of me. I told my mother that I was going to marry you someday. I told uh, one of our good friends from, or one of my friends from childhood, uh, you knew her through your husband and, and through college and stuff, but uh, I, I told her the, the same thing, that, hey, this is coming, and this is the woman that I'm going to marry someday. I thought it was a long way off. 
in my head, I was like, oh, well, it was just financial barriers. It was like, right. oh, well, I got to do this and then I got to do that. And then I can do this other thing. And I was fine with that, too. Yeah. Uh, All right. And was it, I guess, like early January, huh? I asked, I was like, hey, it's never occurred to me to ask you, do you want to live with me first? Like if we if we can't get married right away or whatever, do you want to? Would you like to move in together earlier? Do you want us to be able to kind of start building our life together now? You lived with your husband before you guys married. You guys lived oh, yeah. together for a long, long time. You were only married for a from couple months about, before he died. From about go, we lived together. And in my head, I had always just thought, oh, well, she she'd like it the traditional way this time. Mm-hmm. But then I realized, hey. Like, we could move in together now and have a nicer place with plenty of room for both of us and the boys. Why don't we just do that? And, well, I at least should ask her. So I just asked her one day, and again, it wasn't fucking romantic in any fashion. I was, I was brushing just like, my teeth. Hello, would you like to do this? So I've been thinking, would you like to move in with me? Brush, brush, brush. <laughs> I was like, uh, I think. Had you thought about it? Or you just never even, like the eventual marriage thing, you just thought it wasn't a possibility, so. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be a possibility. I don't think I ever, I hon- I honestly don't think I ever thought about living with you. <laughs> well, you decided really quickly. You were like, I did, yes. But I think it's because I didn't, I mean, I didn't think that it was ever going to happen. So why, I mean, why dwell on it when I dwelled on so much other stuff? <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's not one I chose to dwell on. And so when it did, when that option kind of appeared, I was re- I was generally surprised, and I was kind of like, oh, well, let's give this some thought. Well, that's not so bad. Okay, I can do that. I already love the guy. Okay. So we started looking for a place immediately. Uh, yes. And found one within like a week and a half. It, yeah, it was. <laughs> like it was really fast. We found the perfect place, and we didn't we move in. We signed a lease. We signed Within a week, 10 days of that's deciding what I was say. to move in together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was 10 days, two weeks tops. Yes. Uh, and then it was the long wait for the month to pass we, so we could in, move in. Yeah. In fact, we signed the lease on our one-year anniversary, our technical official anniversary. Uh, from the day that I asked you to, to be, be my girlfriend. girlfriend? Even though we'd been really been together a little bit longer than for that. For like almost two years. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that's really funny. I had forgotten that. That's right. We signed the lease on our on our house together on on our anniversary. That's awesome. Now, we had the conversation in January. Uh, excuse me. In we had the conversation in December about someday I'm going to ask you to marry me. Right. Unbeknownst to you, I had begun to decide how was the best way to to make this happen. You knew at this point because I had said, "Yeah, I'm gonna. I can't wait until I ask you to be my wife." But you like you you thought that was a long way off. Matter of fact, we had talked about about a year, eighteen months, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. We you said eighteen months or two years. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my feet comfortable. In my head, I figured it would probably be sooner than that. Not necessarily the wedding, but the proposal would probably be sooner than that. Yeah, um, yeah. I had always thought that the wedding would be eighteen months or two years out, and that the proposal would be yeah sooner. Obviously, because you gotta you gotta plan the wedding or whatever. Right. But you and I had talked about it even when we weren't people that were going to get married. Like, we had well, talked I'll about never get married again. Oh, I'd have to be in. We're we're gonna elope. We're gonna go to Vegas. We're gonna do this. Right. We're gonna do that. We signed the papers for our new house, and the next day, I think, or two days later, I bought your ring. Yep. And I kept it because my thinking was, and it was going to be so slick. <laughs> we were going to walk into the house for the first time, you know, empty house with the keys and like, all right, and we're going to put the this here and we're going to do this here. And before we moved anything, I was going to get down on one knee in our house alone, you and me in our house for the first time and propose. And it was awesome. And I was so excited about it. And then we didn't move into the house and we didn't move into the house and we didn't move into the house. <laughs> and we didn't get keys until the end of the month. And that's fine because it's not like we paid to move in earlier or right. anything. But because it took so long, I couldn't wait anymore. It's burning a hole in your pocket. It was. It totally closet. was. You get to Valentine's night. Mm-hmm. And you had a lovely day. I, we did. We had a great day. I, I had a bunch of plans for you. I had like little presents and small presents and a card and all. We did a bunch of fun stuff. Fun. And it was a nice day. And it was all done. And I thought, okay, this is the end of the day. And we climb in bed. 
and I can't even remember what it was that you do you remember what you you said to set me off? Yes. We were just talking about our future. Uh-huh. Just talking about I think maybe you had mentioned about us maybe getting married again one day or talking about yeah, that should be great. And we're talking about the kids, whatever. Or we were talking about the house. Oh no, maybe. no, 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 no. That's what it was. That's what it was. We were talking about the house. And I said, I'm really I and mean, it was right before we were going to bed. I'm really excited about our little life together. We're starting our little life together. And then you went, Oh god. Oh. Can I show you something? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah. And you're like, okay, I was going to wait, but I got to show you. And I said, okay, what? what is it? And you said, it's a video. And I was like, oh, shit. Babe, it's like. It was, it was, it was literally 11.55. Yes. On it's Valentine's midnight. night. Come on, dude. Okay. Okay. And I said, if this is just some tech bullshit, I'm going to be pissed. Like, if this is like some. This is the new iPhone commercial. Yes. Or something about <laughs> a Mac or Tesla. I was <laughs> losing my shit. But not because it's not the same with me and I. And, she, and then you said, I made you a video. And I said, oh. Oh. <laughs> no, I Which I'd never that. done. No. You said, I've blogged about you. I've, you know, so. I blogged about you on our anniversary. That was yes, the first you time did. I'd ever written about you. Yes. And, um,. Yes, you blogged about me. And then you said, so I made you a video. So I'm guessing the next thing you're going to do is write me a song. So I have my name in the song. <laughs> yeah, you keep dropping that hint, playing that. <laughs> you, you you play that one string. Look, you you are marrying a DJ. You are marrying you a podcaster. You are marrying a writer. You are marrying a, an actor. You are marrying you don't have, a, a you director. Have to, but you don't have time to write songs. You no, are I'm not marrying a musician. That's no, the one thing that's that I'm. That's one of the you many things that I'm not talented in. No, I, so really, you not, not to say that it's never ever going to happen. Well, but I'm just messing with you about that anyway. Mm-hmm. It'd be awesome. But sure. I'm fine. Honey with bun. It. Oh, really. oh my honey bun. No. 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 Oh okay. All right. Anyway, not like that. <laughs> You're ridiculous. Okay. Um She said, Yeah, I made I made you a video. I made us a video. And I said, Oh. So I said then and I saw you go into your closet, but I didn't know what you were getting in your I mean, I just I was like, Well, maybe it's grabbing pants or something. I don't know what you were doing. So I started watching the video and it and it started off with when handsome met beautiful. And then it started, it was all these pictures of us, and it was really sweet, and it was great, and it was beautiful, and the words of the song were fantastic, and I was like, oh, oh, I was laughing, you know. And you'd come and sat beside me, and I figured you were watching the movie, the video with me. I looked, at, I think I looked, glanced at you a couple of times, and at the end, it said, I'm so glad I met you, beautiful. And it said, now, will you be Mrs. Handsome? <laughs> And I went, oh. I was like, oh. and I turned, and you were on one knee next to your bed. And I was like, really? And you said, I love you. Will you marry me? And I said, yeah. And then we both cried, and you hugged me. Uh, we cry a lot. We, uh, we after, are uh, weepy. At uh, Handsome and Beautiful's place at the at the corner of Awesome and Bomb Diggity. Yes. Uh, we we are uh, we are weepy bitches uh, around our place. Um, I did. I cried. I. I got real, and then oh, and and I got real filled up. I didn't cry, but I got real filled up, and then. Um, I stuck. I you got real. You got real cold. felt up too. I did. <laughs> um, and then, uh, I stuck on my hands. So you could put the ring on my hand, and you. We talked about the ring and everything, and then you slipped the ring on my hands, and but I was shaking so bad, and you said, "Oh, I'm glad you're shaking." <laughs> yeah, I'm glad it's not just me. Um, we were both very then, shaky, and, and then, then <laughs> I took you to Huddle House. You sure did. Woohoo! Treat a girl right. <laughs> um, I that's it's the way we consummate all of our marriages <laughs> around here. Um, uh, no, I I. Uh, 
We couldn't sleep. We were so excited. Uh, yeah, just couldn't sleep, man. And and uh, we posted uh, we posted the, <laughs> the photo of the ring, and you know she said yes to Facebook and stuff, and it and it blew up before we went to it bed did. that night. It, at uh, you know like three a.m. or whenever we actually went to sleep, like we already had you know like a hundred notifications or something crazy. It, it got out of hand. It was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Now, what uh, what the people listening to this episode might not know is um, you and I just got married last night. We did. I mean, not. I mean, today while we're recording this, but by the time right. this is played, this will be played for our our wedding day. We're gonna um, we're gonna surprise everybody and get married on April twentieth. Whoop. Or we did surprise everybody and we got did. married and it on was April awesome. 20th. We are having an engagement shower slash party. Keep calm, Mary on. Indeed. And everybody knows about that. They've been invited to that. And then uh, about halfway through the thing, we spring it on them that uh, there's a change of venue. And uh, you and I are going to get married in our own backyard. Literally. Let's do this thing. I'm really excited to be your husband. I'm really excited to be your wife. Uh... We've it's been gonna living be together. really fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun, uh, and and we'll have to have you back on the show at some point to uh, to discuss the particulars of the event. I'm sure <laughs> other guy will have his take on things next week, but um, uh, I want to hear uh, what you thought about the big day too. We'll have you back on um, uh, soon. You've been living with me for a month now, or with us, we've been living together for a month. Um, yeah, it's, it really has how been. How is a while. it? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is it? It's it's good. It's a little scary. It's been it's stressful, good. huh? It's been very stressful. I mean, not us, but just like the fact that there's a lot going on and there's always a lot going on. Well, it's um, there's um, there's a particularly big amount of stuff going on right now. I mean, we're getting married. And nobody knows, so we're having Here, to do everything. And we don't really have our shit together. If you think about it, we don't. No, we've got. Mm. Hey, we we got a bunch of ideas, and we kind of got an idea, but we don't actually have anything. We've got a lot of the <sighs> shit together. Okay, I believe you. You don't need to stress so much. Okay, uh, and and we we're living together, so we're we're figuring out each other. Even even though we were pretty much inseparable anyway. Yeah. But now our stuff is commingled, which has which has come together very nicely, by the way. Our stuff works together almost as easily as we do right yeah like all our furniture kind of match it's just i don't know it came out we got a lot of it holy shit we had a lot of stuff yeah i I had a lot of stuff well you had a i had plenty of stuff and then you had a lot of stuff (laughs) (laughs) i did i had a lot of stuff from the wedding i mean from my first wedding and like gifts that i boxed up and stuff and and we're still i mean slowly but surely we're getting through these boxes and it we have not touched a box in probably a week, but we've spring break was us. We're gonna get any rest, we and have the boys so a lot. right. And so we've had a lot of stuff going on. We're still living around some boxes, not as many as we had, but there's a couple. Not only stepping into the role of living with the fiance and becoming the, the Mrs. One guy, I, I'm also becoming bonus mom, and I don't care what you say. It is different than being the girlfriend. Who helps out with the kids. Who hangs out with the kids and doesn't live with them. It is different. Well, yeah. And yeah, because it, it was your house, your, your rules. Now it's our house, our rules. It, it It's <laughs> it's it's kind of hard. And it's 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 a very it's a very weird thing to come in and to be responsible to try to I guess to be allowed in a weird fashion to raise some other woman's kids that's not meant to sound in a bad bad way at all because your ex-wife is a nice person she's a good mom she's a good mom she yeah. really is but it's a i mean it'd be it's a fine thing to be the girlfriend and be introduced and stuff but to be like okay well you're gonna help mother these children also and they are not blood yours but you're gonna love them like crazy and you so here you go this is totally loud Enjoy yourself. Good luck. Good luck with that. Uh, it's so kind of like that when you bring a, them home from the hospital, though. It's I'm like, sure, hey, these are your hey, children. These are your children. You, you're going to love them. I'm, I'm sure you'll do fine. Enjoy that. 
Yeah. Good luck with that. And yeah. they sit you home and you go, the difference is this. The difference is this. When you bring them home from the hospital, they don't do much. They don't move around and they don't talk back. And your requirements are pretty much about not dropping them, feeding them on a regular basis, and making sure that they don't soil themselves too badly and, and, and keeping them clean. I mean, and literally, that's about all you're asked to do. And then every day, you're asked to do a little more as they develop. And so you ramp up into fatherhood or motherhood. And I've I've had five years of coming to grips with being a father. Mm -hmm. And it's taken me a full five years to be what I feel like is any semblance of a good dad. I mean, I was always a good dad because I loved my kids. And I feel like if you love your kids and you're trying, you are a good dad or a good mom. There's levels of that, obviously. And there's levels of meeting your responsibility um, and, and doing what you should do. And I feel like I'm I'm really there. I'm there. I'm 100 oh, yeah. percent committed, and and I'm I'm I mean I'm not a perfect dad, and every day I'm trying to be better. But I am a really good dad now. I know that I got that down, and every day is easier than the day before now because of that. But it took me five years to get to that place. I'm asking you to get up to speed in a month, effectively, and I have realized that in a lately. Weekend. I've realized, yeah, 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 yeah. First weekend we moved in, we had him. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Welcome to real life. Boom. Yeah. How do you like them apples? Well, the good news is you haven't run away. Yet. Which is which, <laughs> which is nice because uh, I don't think I could afford the rent if you didn't live there. That's a true story. Um, <laughs> you need my rent money. <laughs> we are a two-income household, thank God. <laughs> yeah. It's not big at incomes, but they'll do. Who do you think will be the most surprised that we get married or that we got married on the 20th? Uh, I think your sisters might actually be the most surprised. Yeah, we might have to tell one of them. I I, I, I thought we're going to end up having to tell my sister. We may have to ruin the surprise to a handful of people because they're playing like they're not going to come to our fucking party. <laughs> Because nobody <laughs> RSVP. Yeah, shame on you people that didn't God. RSVP. Now that, that you know it's our wedding, crazy. I bet you wish you had RSVP. Right. And here's the problem with that. <laughs> I I'm, I hope I hope nobody shows up. There's I hope it's be just a ton us. Of people there, we Joel. get we get eloped, and it's just uh, it's just us in the backyard with the boys. Every time I look at the, my side of the list, I'm like, everybody, all these people are showing up. Well, not all these people, but most of these people are going to show up. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of people there. there. Are, which is awesome. Like, no, it's going to be amazing. Which is going to be great. I mean, they they like us. They really like us. Um, the song this week is going to be from Adam Dale. It's called uh, Kite is the name of it. And it's a, a sweet little song that made me think of you. So <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to use that one this week. You can find more um, of this episode of this podcast, which is not generally like this. Generally, it's two guys talking about poop jokes and uh, and, and dicks um and vaginas, uh, but uh, and news stories too, and the word of the day, and many other fun things. It's all for you at two guys one pod dot com. And it's free. And it's absolutely free. That's right. That's a woman that knows how to sell something. <laughs> uh, you can uh, you can check that all out online. You can email us, of course. Let us know what you thought of this episode or uh, or what you think of the show in general. Two guys one pod at me dot com. You got anything else you want to do? Fine, if you're done, I'm done. Well, don't say it like that and make me feel real good about it. Why don't you? I think it's a really good thing that we decided to meet and hang out. And, <laughs> and then, are you laughing at me now? No, I'm 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 laughing at the the underwhelming nature of that comment. It's a very good thing that we got to uh, to meet and hang out and uh, spend some time together, First get I to thought. know each other a little bit. Uh, <laughs> No, really, though. It is the thing of our life, my love. <laughs> it is. I, I really am glad that you that you saw a little bit of, of what I saw the whole time and decided, let's give this a shot. Let's see what this can be. And that you did give give us a try. Because it was getting harder and harder to... Not to be in love with you. Keep me at arm's length. Yeah. I'm was... very, very hard not to love. <laughs> Humility, people. It's my favorite character trait. <laughs> um, <laughs> here's, here's what I think. I think that we are, um, not to pat ourselves on the back too much, but I, I think that we are a great 
second act story. I think that we mm-hmm. are a great second chances story. I, I, you know, I'm married and divorced. Uh, your husband dies young. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just, you know, a, a month after you're married, effectively, or two months after you're married. Three, three, months. three. There yeah. you go. I've told you before, and I've told other people this too. You and I both had every opportunity and excuse to check out of this side of life and right. and go on just being ourselves, by ourselves, doing the thing that we do, being a hardened individual. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that we were able to find each other and, and to find those soft spots again is um, nice. hopeful. It is. It really is. It's, it's a relief. I love you. I love you, too. Do. And hey, uh, I think we should, since most of the listeners, whatever, are not going to be at the wedding, I think we should tell them our vows. Okay. I mean, they're not, it's not like anybody's going to hear it before. No, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. Uh, all right. You want to say our, we, we needed to practice tonight anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In front of God, family, and friends, and this podcasting microphone, <laughs> I pledge myself to you. To the person you will grow to be and to the couple we will be together. With my whole heart, I promise to be faithful and supportive and to make our family's love and happiness my priority. I will be yours in plenty and in want, in sickness and in health, in defeat and in triumph. I will dream with you, celebrate with you. And walk beside you through whatever our lives may bring. You are my person. My life. My love. My beautiful. My handsome. Now and for always, I love you. Now and for always, I love you. (laughs) If you're listening to this, then we did that yesterday. And now you got to hear it too. If uh, you're in this studio, we'll do that in 18 days. Yay! <laughs> for real. Yeah, we'll do it for real in front of God and friends and everybody. Yeah. So, I'm one guy. And I'm Honey Bun. And that's how I became her handsome. And that's how I became his beautiful. <laughs> Floating around in the wind A reckless set of wings I met you and that changed everything We were as tight as a kite in a string And together we were strong Every obstacle was over I just wanted you to know I hope you never let me go Baby Though the weather may shake me And if I should break free I want you to To get back home again It's so easy Letting myself go Oh But here we are Just a couple of stars Still high above the clouds Well I'm so glad Your feet still touch the ground 
just wanted you to know I hope you never let me go Oh, baby Though the weather may shake me And if I should break free I want you to know somewhere the uncensored version will play for yes um mrs other guy <laughs> yes <laughs> um i'm one guy oh i forgot i'm supposed to say no that's okay so so we're gonna i'm one guy you get it this out? and i'm honey bun okay oh yeah okay and this is how i became her handsome and this is how i became his beautiful there you okay. go that's how we're gonna intro it all right you ready okay just should I say it money you you just say it say however it like you want to say it we can say it a bunch of different ways if you want to, and then there we can be cut food it. Here. You, do what? There should be food here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't bring. I didn't call craft service before we came over. Uh, um, so, I'm one guy, and I'm beautiful. No, no, it's not. <laughs> I'm honey bun. <laughs> Who am I? I mean, Who you are I? beautiful. You are beautiful. <laughs> that wasn't the plan. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> So I'm one guy. And I'm Honey Ben. And this is how I became her handsome. <laughs> and this is how I oh, and this is how I became as beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sound so happy about it. <laughs> this is how I became her handsome. You you had you've had forty five episodes of practice. Forty three. <laughs> and also, you know, eight years of professional <laughs> yeah. broadcasting. Okay, so you say I'm one guy, and I say, and I'm Honey Bun. Yeah. You say this is how I Here, became Why don't we beautiful. just say? Why don't we say them individually, and then I'll cut them together. I'm one guy. Just say I'm Honey Bun for a while, and we'll go okay. back and forth with 